Hi, my name is Steve McKinder. I've been an automotive instructor for about 15 years. And um, I've seen over the years, it's very difficult to train a mechanic on electrical theory. Uh, when you start talking about Ohm's law and voltage drop testing and all that, it's very difficult. It requires a lot of hands-on training, a lot of time um, and exercises to get the mechanic to understand that thoroughly. Um, throughout the years, I've helped mechanics troubleshoot problems, and almost always it's something electrical. So, in traditionally, traditionally we've always used voltmeters to do electrical diagnostics, such as uh, back probing, measuring voltage drop, that kind of stuff. And you really have to have a very good understanding of electrical to use that tool properly and to understand what is teaching you. So over the past few years, I've put a lot of thought into this, but uh, just recently I developed a tool that I think will revolutionize the diagnostics industry. As we see in the modern vehicles, cars are getting more and more complex, more and more electronics put on these vehicles. The problem seems to only be getting worse in the automotive uh, repair field. So uh, to address that problem, I developed a tool. And here's the tool right here. Um, this little tool here is a, um, it's an automotive electrical diagnostic. It actually works on all circuits, whether it's AC voltage or DC voltage. You can use it on a motorcycle, a semi-truck, a motorhome, an automobile. You can even, with a change of a couple of components, um, use it in household electricity measure, AC voltage, and all that. This is much more than a voltmeter. This is a, a load tester that actually confirms the circuit is good or not. You can see here there's an on off switch. Here is a, a switch that allows me to, to generate the desired load and I just read the voltmeter to see if I have the source voltage. So in a few exercises we're going to show you next, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the tool. But uh, when we put it in the off position here, I got it terrible writing but uh, it says zero meaning there's zero load on the circuit so when I turn it on and hook it to a component you're gonna see battery voltage or if it's a, a sensor on a car maybe 8 volts or 5 volts something like that and then we could choose the desired load on the component and actually load the circuit and tell if that circuit is good or not so we were gonna I've got three exercises and we're gonna get started thank you Okay, here's our first exercise. This is a Chrysler Town & Country. And as you can see in the video, uh, the left headlight is dim and the right headlight is nice and bright. So several things can cause that problem, such as a lack of power to the bulb, a bad ground. And um, so we are going to use our new tool to actually diagnose this circuit. You have a vehicle with the dim, dim headlight. Let's do the section. And, um, you can see with the, the switch in the zero position, meaning zero load, we show battery voltage. This would be exactly the same as if we showed a, um, a used a voltmeter or a test light. This is just voltage in the system. It has nothing to do with how much work can be done. In order to test that circuit effectively, we need to put a load on it. We actually need to measure, does it have the capability to deliver the amperage or the wattage needed to operate that component. So in the, in the past, what we've done was we back probe. That way we had the load in the circuit, the fuel pump, the headlight, whatever it might be, and we back probed and check for power and check for ground. But even if you ask a technician, uh, if I've got one volt on the ground, is that good or bad? A lot of them can't answer that question. So this tool takes all that question out of it. And um, you can see here, I've got back down the meter, where I've got the headlights on, I've got zero load, and it shows 12.1. Battery volt, 12.2 voltage. Uh, that's battery voltage. This is what we would expect to see with a voltmeter with no load. Now what I could do, as you can see on here, is if you look closely, I have 0.12, so that's a tenth of an amp draw and uh, 1.0 amp or I could even bump it up to 5 amps of current draw. That's typically what this headlight would draw is about 5 amps and you can see the battery voltage drops to 6 volts or the voltage in that circuit drops to 6 volts 
And that, that's not good. That's why the headlight is dim. The headlight needs 12 volts to operate effectively. It does not shine nice and bright at 6 volts. So where is the problem? Is the problem on the power side or the ground side? And all you have to do is you come down here to the, to the black lead and we'll check for good ground. We'll take the ground wire off of this headlight circuit and we're going to come up here to the battery and touch the battery. And look at there. I've got uh, my 11.4 volts indicating I was at 6, right? Now I'm at 11.4. I'm within 1 volt of battery voltage. Actually, I'm well within 1 volt of battery voltage. So 11.4, when I touch the good battery, when I come back to the harness ground, I'm at 6. So the problem is on the ground side of the circuit. Now, if I were to uh, leave that uh, when I went and touched it to the battery ground or a known good ground, if it's still read 6 volts, that would tell me my problem is on the power side of the circuit. It's not the ground. But I had removed the, gr the ground wire from the harness and touched a known good ground. The voltage came back, and that indicates to me that the problem is on the ground side. Somewhere it's on the ground side, whether it's the ground eyelet, the wire is bad, a corroded connector, something. But this tells the technician a key thing, that when you put the new component in, it's not going to work. That's the whole idea of this, comp of this test. You get a car in for a no start, the fuel pump's not running, you could check it with a voltmeter and say, oh yeah, I got 12 volts there, but that doesn't mean there's enough power to run the fuel pump. By using this tool, you can unplug the fuel pump, put the tool in its place, put a 5 amp load on that circuit, and turn the key on. If you see battery voltage, I can guarantee you, when you put that new fuel pump in, it will work. Because we've tested the electrical circuit to ensure the integrity of the circuit has enough power, meaning amps times volts, wattage, it can deliver enough wattage to run that fuel pump effectively. And that's the whole purpose of this. Take the guesswork out. We don't need to know Ohm's Law. We don't need to go through tons of schooling. We just hook up this tool and test the circuit. The easiest way to identify what would be the appropriate load is typically look at the fuse that's protecting the component. If it's a 10 amp fuse, you typically want to do about half of that amperage. So 5 amps or maybe 1 amp. If it's a, a 20 amp fuse, you want to do typically a 5 or a 10 amp load. You don't ever want to exceed the fuse rating. But um, most automotive circuits, the fuse is more than double than what normally runs through it. So the next vehicle we're going to check here is an AC system. How many times do you see a car come in that has a... Um, a burned up AC clutch. The face of the clutch is all burned up. Maybe it's something difficult like a Cadillac North Star or something where you can barely even get to it. So it's really impossible to back probe it and test it with a voltmeter. But when you pull the AC clutch, you know, compressor out of there and you reach down there, you can plug my tool into that harness and typically an AC clutch draws about two amps or so. We could put it on a one amp load and cycle the compressor with a scan tool and see if the circuit is any good. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so here we are uh, with an AC compressor problem on this Jeep here. Actually, it doesn't have any problem. But if you were to do like we described earlier with a burned up AC clutch, all you have to do is plug in my tool into the factory harness. And I've got the, uh, the scan tool cycling the AC clutch right now. And you can see there's battery voltage, then it shuts off. It goes on and off. There's zero load on the circuit right now. We talked about earlier, typically an AC clutch draws about one or two amps. So I'm going to dial it up to one amp. And you can see now when it cycles on, look at that, I got 11.8 volts, 11.8. And the battery voltage was what? 12.2. We're within four tenths, within half a volt of battery voltage. And that's, of course, uh, acceptable because of the losses through the relay and all the wiring through the car. So a half a volt, that's power and ground combined, uh, will give us an, uh, an acceptable reading. So it's very simple to use. It takes all the guesswork out. Is the wiring good? No. Yes, the wiring is fine. We just proved it right here by putting a load on it. The last thing we want to check is uh, how about something more delicate, like a throttle position sensor. So we have on the same vehicle here, I'm just going to take the wires off. And we can go right over here to my throttle position sensor. And uh, you can see on the scan or on the on the tester here, it reads 5.0 volts, which is typically what a sensor runs at, right? They all run at about 5 volts. 
So we wonder if, um, if there was corrosion in the system, maybe we're getting a little bit uh, low of a voltage reading or maybe a little bit high of a voltage reading. If, if you understand electrical, then you would know if the TPS consistently read high, that would be an indication of a bad ground. If the TPS consistently read low, let's say wide open throttle was only 3 volts and at idle it was only 0.2 a volt, that would be an indication of a power supply problem. So here we are, it's 5 volts, we still, this thing has some resistors in here, it works on Ohm's law. So what I could do is if I hit the 100 ohm resistor, or it's actually a, a 100 ohm resistor, I could put a 50 milliamp load on that 5 volt circuit and you can see it's still is acceptable, right? It went from 5.08 to 5.06, which 50 milliamps is plenty for a TPS to work. But I can even go further and go up a notch here and it's still reading 4.89, 4.9. And that's a half an amp low. That's a pretty good load on that TPS circuit, and it's still showing good. So we can also use this for a wiggle test, right? If we have the load on the circuit, we can actually go through and start wiggling the harness and see if we get some activity on the meter. That would indicate, hey, we got a harness problem, bad connection, something like that. So this tool, whether it's something as delicate as a throttle position sensor or as heavy duty as an electric cooling fan, we can pull 10 amps on a cooling fan circuit if needed. So this tool is works on every circuit on the car, whether it's a radio, a cooling fan, a TPS, whatever it might be, we can effectively test that circuit. And don't forget, it works on motorcycles, semi-trucks up to 24 volts. It's a great tool. I think it's an incredible, in my, uh, in my opinion, I think it's a revolutionary breakthrough for the automotive diagnostic man because so much of the diagnostics, you can ask the auto parts store suppliers, they all get tons of electrical components back under warranty saying they're defective. We send them back to the manufacturer. They're never defective because nobody understands electrical. So it would take you know years of hours of training to t train mechanics to be effective in electrical diagnostic. This tool takes all of it away. It's very effective. Thank you for watching.